Hi everybody, my name is Sherry. I'm from Brush Paint Studio and Vintage in Constantin, Poland. Today I wanted to talk to you about the different kinds of paints that I use. So I'm starting out with a chalk paint, and an acrylic paint, and a milk paint. Don't think there is one perfect paint. I think the paint that's perfect for you is the one that you like to use. So, and I like to use all of these. So, to start out with, I've got a chalk paint, and this brand is Nordic Chic, it's a Danish company. This chalk paint is a water based paint, and it has high adhesion, it has a calcium carbonate in it, which um, adheres to surfaces really well. So, the only thing that you need to do to your furniture is to clean it. And then, this is the consistency, and then you paint it on. So the consistency is a little bit thicker than normal. Um, you can add a little bit of water to it. Um, there are different kinds of chalk paints. There's, I mean, this is taken off like wildfire. I would say any Sloan probably started the whole chalk paint phenomenon in the world. Um, hats off to her. And since then, loads of brands of chalk paints have come out, uh, depending where you are in the world. I've tried a lot of the European brands. Um, I like Nordic Chic. I like that it's eco-label. It's not available everywhere, so I will leave a link below, but just be mindful that it's not available everywhere in the world. Um, but honestly, chalk paint, if you just Google chalk paint, you'll come up with you know loads of brands. So, um, the paint is thicker, and there are basically different uh, grades of chalk paint, cheaper versions, more expensive versions. Some chalk paints level, some chalk paints don't level at all, so you just really have to find the one that you like using. Even though it's easy to use, for example, you only need to clean your piece, it's still a two-step process. Your first step is paint, your second step is either wax or lacquer. And what happens is, because the paint is highly porous and you apply a wax or a lacquer, it goes into the paint and it kind of bonds together. Um, so when completely cured, the finish is super durable. I like to use chalk paint for more rustic styling of furniture, or something that uh, has a technique, a, a decorative technique. Um, I find that it's quite easy to manipulate. It can be um, watered down quite a lot and still ma maintain its adhesion qualities. So this is the chalk paint that I like to use. Um, find one that you like if you even like chalk paint. You may not like chalk paint and that's okay too. Just find a product that you like. So the next type of paint that I use is you've seen me use this before, is Fusion Mineral Paint. And this is an acrylic based paint. It's manufactured in Canada. And um, it, it was reformulated from the ground up. It has a lot of um, acrylic resin in it. So when it cures after the three week, the three week cure time, after it cures, it's super hard. Um, it is a little bit thinner than chalk paint, uh, but there are some things like, for example, a fresco powder that you can add to it if you wanted to do some sort of anti uh, um, empasto decorative technique. Or something with very thick uh, paint splotches or something like that. But this paint levels really well. Also, two step, you need to clean your furniture, you need to scuff sand it if it has a lacquer or a paint on it, and um, then paint. It doesn't need a top coat, but you can, for example, if you have kitchen cabinets that you're painting or a table surface that you're painting, you can put a top coat on it, um, like a lacquer or a finishing oil. 
and this will add to the durability, but it's not generally needed, which is what I love. So chalk paint two-step, fusion paint still two-step. The last paint that I like to use is a milk paint. And this is, I love this paint personally, I just love it. it I use this paint and I get such a feeling of satisfaction from using this paint and I I think perhaps is because it starts off as a powder um, if you can see that it's a it's a, a powder paint with five ingredients in it what you do is you to paint this you mix equal parts I take a scoop of the paint mix equal parts paint equal parts water Give it a good mix for probably about five minutes to make sure all of the pigments are mixed thoroughly. Let it sit for about five to 10 minutes. Go back to it and mix it again. And paint. Now this paint, milk paint, is much thinner than the other two paints that I use. Create such an authentic look. Um, Two coats are needed and also because this paint is porous you will need a top coat. In the beginning I recommend that you buy a light color if you're beginning this furniture flipping business want to give it a go. The logic behind what I'm saying with the light colors is and by light I mean a light gray, um, a light yellow, off-white, um, a Scandinavian grayish white, a super bright white, the colors that are on the lighter side of the, the color palette, um, no matter what brand. Light colors have a tendency just to be attracted by more people. If you paint something, for example, on this beautiful, this is um, kitchen scale, which is kind of like a gray turquoise color. Fantastic color, absolutely love it. If you post a piece of furniture painting with this, you're going to limit your potential customers based on the color. So if you paint something in a light neutral color, you will have more opportunities to sell painted furniture that you've just done. So again, I recommend you experiment, find what you like. You may like to use a chalk paint and that's perfectly fine. Find the one that you like and just continue to learn about the product and what, what it can do. Um, I have a tendency to use Fusion for more modern finishes. I have used it for uh, decorative um, techniques as well, like I did an impasto technique by adding fresco uh, medium to it, a powder that you add to the paint and then it goes on quite thickly and it dries super hard and it just creates different techniques. Um, but I predominantly like to use this for more uh, modern styling, something that I don't have plans to do a technique to. Um, chalk paint, they are, I like using them for not modern, modern furniture, for something that um, I might be using decorative waxes on, and then the mustard seed, the milk paint. I quite typically just use this on its own and finish it with hemp oil. That's one of my favorite finishes. I think that the paint just shines through and it looks completely authentic. But yeah, so I really like this paint for more farmhouse rustic kind of Amish style furniture or Pennsylvania Dutch kind of styling of furniture. Um, uh, folk, that kind of thing. The colors. The colors are more of a muted palette, so it does have a tendency to, to suit the style of furniture a little bit better. Um, the color palette with Fusion is amazing, and Nordic Chic has also got a fantastic color palette. So these are the paints that I like to use. Don't be afraid to try something new. Don't be afraid to experiment. Um, there's top coats and decorative finishes and glazes. I, you saw me do a glaze. I also wanted to talk a little bit about paint quality. Um, this can be a contentious issue because people
people uh, who paint furniture for a living tend to be brand loyal. And I don't really want to mention any brands because depending on where you live in the world, you'll have different brands than what I do. But generally speaking, the more expensive the product, the better quality it is. Now, that's just a general rule and it's not a hard fact. Um, also, a lot of it has to do with transportation. So, the companies that are manufactured the furthest away from where you live, they're going to have added costs in transportation. And the reason that I mention this is because you can buy cheap brands of paint and if you're painting to flip, to sell to somebody, and you're only as good as your finish. So if, for example, you painted something and you used the cheapest paint possible, and the person that bought this piece of furniture from you gets home and after a week there's chips or there's damage or something, um, it looks poorly, it reflects poorly on your workmanship. So I recommend spending the, the most that you can afford to spend on a paint product to ensure that you have the best quality product. Um, if you are on a hard budget, you can find ways to cut costs. For example, you don't need to buy the most expensive brushes. You know, you, you buy a cheaper piece of furniture or hunt for something that's free, you pound the pavement and see what you can find in your neighborhood and get it for free and then invest more money in, in your paint products. In that way, if you're starting out, you can build up your reputation so that people will come to you and will know that you are a quality furniture painter and you know what you're doing. Thanks for watching and the next video that I plan on doing is going to be staging your furniture. So stay tuned.